Hey, so in this video, I'm gonna show you a really simple way to design a persuasive speech. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to win people to your way of thinking with using just your words, then this technique can be very, very helpful. Hey, I'm Doug Standard with Fearless Presentations, the fastest, easiest way to eliminate public speaking fear. And on this video, we're gonna show you some really simple things that you can do if you're trying to persuade your audience. So this technique can be very useful in staff meetings or if somebody interrupts you with a question while you're actually delivering your formal presentation. In those kind of situations, a lot of times, we feel like we have to be persuasive. We have to win people to our way of thinking. And sometimes it can be a little challenging. The reason why, these types of speeches are, are fairly hard to kind of pull off is that in most cases, human nature is kind of working against us. What we've been taught from the time that we're in elementary school, junior high school, high school, is that if we wanna persuade somebody, you wanna do it with facts and figures and statistics. The more facts that you have, the more persuasive you're gonna be. The problem with that though is that when we're using facts, statistics, things like that to try to persuade our audience. Human nature kind of kicks in and we want to play devil's advocate. So by the way, this is true even if the person who you're speaking to actually agrees with the concept that you're trying to get across to them. The moment that you say, this is a hard and fast rule, this is a fact, this is always true, human nature kind of kicks in and we go, well, wait a minute, I can think of at least one situation where this thing would not be true. And when that, when that happens, it becomes very difficult to win people to your way of thinking. So a better way to kind of persuade people is instead of just using facts and figures and statistics, is to start with an example, a real life example that you can use to prove that the concept that you're trying to get across to your audience is true. By the way, we didn't invent this. This has been around for thousands of years. If you've ever read the Bible, the gospels in the Bible are full of parables, which are stories that are being used as a way to kind of teach people a greater a greater piece of wisdom. Aesop, and back even you know 300 years before Christ, was using stories as a way to, to tell people the moral of the story. So this has been around for centuries. And for some reason, we've just kind of stopped using it in the business world. But if you ever watch a really, really good professional speaker, a, a person who makes a living speaking in front of groups, then he or she is most likely going to use stories as the way to persuade the, the audience. And you can do that as well. Um, so I'll give you a good example of this. So let's say, for instance, that I want to, I'll just pick a random topic. Uh, let's just say that I want to convince you that you should wear a seatbelt. So what I did was I went to the internet and I kind of looked up some statistics about seatbelts. These are actual statistics from the Department of Transportation. So three statistics about why you should wear a seatbelt. The first one is that 53% of all motor vehicle fatalities from last year were people who weren't wearing seatbelts. Second statistic is that people not wearing seatbelts are 30 times more likely to be ejected from the vehicle. And then finally, in a single year, crash deaths and injuries cost us over $70 billion. So if I kind of take those three statistics and I use those as a way, to, if that's basically all I do is I just give you those three statistics statistics, and I say, okay, you should wear your seatbelt now. There's a good chance that you're going to, human nature is going to kick in and you're going to want to poke holes at that because that's what I want to do, by the way. I'm sitting here reading these statistics and the first one that uh, was mentioned was 53% of people who were killed or injured in a motor vehicle were not wearing their seatbelt. And I'm thinking 53%, that's kind of close to half, right? So that means that 47% of the people that were injured or killed were wearing their seatbelt. So for me, that's not a real plausible fact that, that kind of proves the point. Um, the, so, and, and by the way, that's gonna happen every time that you give a statistic. You're gonna have at least some of the people in the audience that will hear that statistic and say, I can think of at least one situation where that's not true. So the, the technique that we encourage people to use to be more persuasive or to design a persuasive speech is to start with an example or a story that proves that that point is true. So if I wanna to prove to you that it's important to wear seatbelts, all I have to do is think about one specific time from my own life that either I was wearing a seatbelt and it kept me from getting injured or I wasn't wear a seat, wearing a seatbelt and I did get injured, or maybe it's somebody that I know that wasn't wearing a seatbelt and as a result, they had to do all kinds of surgeries and everything. And I just tell you that story and then use the statistic as a way to back up the, the story. And all of a sudden, it, it works a whole lot better that way. So let me give you an example. Like for instance, from my own life, 
back when I was in my 20s, I was driving from uh, West Texas to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it's a desolate road. I mean, there's just not a whole lot out there. And so I was uh, listening to the radio, I was listening to, to, to uh, some CDs that I had in, in, my, in my truck, which, you know, that was back before MP3s and iPhones and stuff like that. So it's kind of challenging to kind of slip those CDs in one at a time and find the correct track. And so, But it didn't really matter because there's nobody else on the road. I mean, I'm the only car within miles and miles and miles. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I'm changing my CD, and I look up. And when I look up, there's headlights coming right at me. And there was a car that actually ended up crossing over the center line and hitting me head on. And when, I, when that occurred, I, I just totally blacked out. It was, I, I, just, I lost consciousness. When I came to, um, I was, I, I'm kind of checking. I, I, I can see that something traumatic has happened, that I've been in an accident because the car is kind of, the pickup truck is kind of crushed around me. But I've got my seatbelt on, and so I take it off, and I'm trying to open the door. I can't get the door open because it's crushed in. But the, the windshield is shattered. So I ended up climbing out of my truck onto the hood and kind of dropping down to the pavement. And when I looked at the, the guy who was in the other car, I kind of noticed that he had been crushed. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt, and his face had smashed into the 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 steering wheel. And he it was it was he was a mess. He was a mess. The other thing that had occurred was after his face hit the steering wheel, his body continued to go upward, and his leg got trapped underneath the steering wheel. And it kind of it, he had a number of different fractures in his leg. So he ended up being fine. But the difference was is that because I was wearing my seatbelt, I was back in the game. It took me three or four or five weeks or so to to kind of recover from the accident, it took him years. He had surgery after surgery after surgery for facial re reconstruction and to, to put pins in his legs and stuff like that. And the thing about it was that we were both driving very similar vehicles. We were both hit at about the same spot on each one of our, of our cars. The only difference was that I was wearing a seatbelt and he wasn't. So the action I would suggest that you take is to wear your seatbelt. If you do, you're going to be able to avoid some of those traumatic injuries if you're in a very difficult crash. So if you see, what I did there was I spent two minutes, three minutes or so really giving you a picture, painting a picture in your mind of what actually happened when I was in that accident. And I used the last couple of seconds to slip the, the action statement or the the opinion that I have about this and slip it in there. So, and that's a great, great, great way to kind of persuade your audience. Start with an example or story, then end with a with what we call an action benefit statement. And if you do that, you're gonna win people to your way of thinking. Hey, so if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure and do that and leave me a comment. Basically, I read every single one of these comments. So if you have a question or a concern or an idea that I haven't covered, make sure and leave that in a comment and I'll respond to you as fast as I can. We'll see you on the next Fearless Presentations video.